Hello everyone, welcome. In this video, we will see how we can get stock data from a website with Python. Uh, for the website, we'll be looking at MarketWatch website. It's a very popular website for stock data, real-time data, and analytics data. And for um, Python, we will be using Beautiful Soup as our web scraping Python package. So I'll go over uh, the code and explain uh, what the code does. I'm using a Jupyter Notebook, but you can use any IDE. As long as you write the code in the IDE, you should still get the same result as I'll be showing in this code. So first, we need to import some packages. As I said, the first package is beautiful soup and the second package is request. The request package basically extract the HTML code from a specific page using the web, web link. So we will be using this web link to get the HTML code of this page. So for, ex for our, this video purpose, we will start with, in, with, with uh, the stock, Apple stock. So the ticker symbol of Apple stock is AAPL. The reason we are working with the ticker symbol rather than writing the whole apple.inc or whatever is because as you can see in the web link, there's this part of the web link is AAPL that represents the web page for Apple stock. So when we are making our web link, we can put it like this. So if you have a Python version three, you can write F, that's basically for form formatting a string with a specific variable. So instead of a writing AAPL, you can write your own variable by putting a curly brace and then the name of the variable that is stock here. So if you change it from Apple to maybe Tesla, then T-S-L-A, then this page will direct you to the web page for Tesla. So that's a basically a dynamic way of getting the web link for a specific stock with the ticker symbol. So once we have the web link, we can use the resource, uh, request uh, dot get dot link. That is basically this link dot text. So that gives you the HTML code HTML source code for this page. Let's see if um, it works. So we can basically run this and see if our HTML codes are there. As you can see, uh, the, with, with, the H, uh, with the web link, the request successfully got the HTML code out of this page. Now, once we have this HTML code. We don't need that anymore. So next we need to scrape this HTML code. So first we need to parse the HTML code and then we will scrape the different part of this code to get the information that we need. The way we can do it is using beautiful soup. So first we need to create an object of the beautiful soup where the parameter for that is the source that's basically what you what we just created and a parser so in our case we're using lxml parser now just to check if this is working so we can print it and as you can see we still have the whole html page uh, that is represented by the soup object the prettify is just to show the HTML code in a well formatted way, but it's nothing important. So our soup is working. Now we have everything in the soup. And next, there are a few things that we want from this website. As you can see, by looking at this website, there are lots of numbers, there are lots of figures and lots of text. We don't need all of those. We only need few key information and we will extract those information from this website. So first, is we want this text. So we want to know what company we are talking about. The way Beautiful Soup work is 
it looks at the HTML code. Now you can go into the HTML code of a particular page by clicking, right clicking on, and then getting going to the inspect that will take you to the HTML code of that page. And then if you hover your mouse over the code, as you can see in the left, there are different colors of boxes popping up. So that's basically represents where your mouse is. And that's the part, that's the code that's covering the, the web page. So we want to go here. We want this text. So let's keep moving our mouse over and see where that goes. Okay, so when we are here in this div, as you can see the on the left side, the blue box is covering the whole thing. That basically means everything in the blue box is under this div. So we go in this one and then now I see it's a shorter blue box. So we go in this one and uh, here. So this div has our text. So we go in this and uh, come here, see the company name, and that's what we need, the company name. So the way Beautiful Soup work is it search for a HTML tag and a class name or an ID name. So in this case, our HTML tag is h1 and the class name is company name because we want this text from uh, from the website, right? So the HTML tag is h1 and class name is company name. So you can basically get the company name by soup.find that HTML tag that is h1 and the class name that is company name dot text. So basically you get the text of apple.inc. Similarly, we can get these num this number. We want the current price of the stock, so we want to get this number. So similarly, you can move over your mouse and uh, see where this goes. Okay, this is the div. You can go in and then find this div. So basically this div, when you are here, there's a blue box there. Uh, so we want this in intraday price. That is what we want and that will, that will give us the text. So that is our current price. Oops, sorry. So the current price is you can get soup.find and that is h3 is our HTML tag and the name of the class is intraday price. And that's basically gives us the price that's 123. So if we print this, as you can see, we have apple.ink and 123. Now there's this text.split.strip. That's basically, we have these, these uh, dollar sign and then this number. So when you put text, it, uh, it uh, returns everything with the dollar sign and the text. We basically, what we did is we split it on the, with the dollar sign and then only got the number 123. Next, we want our um, forecast. So what we want is a forecast of the price of the stock in one month and three months and in one year. So that information can be found from this table. As you can see, they have a one month, three months and a one year performance prediction. But there is a small problem is that the way they, pre they presented the data is in percentage, not in number. So what is a easy solution, what we can do is we can get this percentage and then the, multiply this percentage with our current price. And that's how we can get what is one month, three months and one, one year price prediction. So to do that first, we need to come here. What part of the HTML code is covering this part? So first we need to find that out. Uh, I can keep moving your mouse um, here. So you can come here and uh, inside this, yes, this one. So basically this div is covering the whole left, left blue box. So we want this div specifically because this is the table we are looking for. And uh, 
So we want the whole table. So this whole div is basically element, element table performance. So when we write the overview data, this is a variable that stores the whole table information. So it's soup.find that the, the HTML tag is div and the name of the class is element, element table performance that basically extracts everything in this table. But when it's a table, there are lots of information. I mean, there are, there are rows. TR represents a table row. But we, we want to capture all the rows and then work on them individually. So what we can do is we can write overview data. That's basically everything in, inside this div and then find all TR. So we want all the rows um, to be stored in a list. So this is a find all. This is not find. This is find all. So we want to find all the rows inside the table row. That is uh, this table. So any TR with class name table row, we want all of them. Now, once we put them in item, let's see what is in there. So if we print it, see we in, in the first, so it's a list. So the first element of the list is the five day. As you can see, that's the first element of the list. That's five day and 2%. In our case, we only want to know what's the price prediction for one month, three month, and one year. So we want number one, that means the second element of the list, that is the one month, and that it has 2.39%. As, uh, that's exactly right, so that's good. And we want index one, index two, and index four. So this is index zero, one, two, three, four. We want one, two, and four. So that's exactly what we did. We got the one month percentage, three months percentage, and one year percentage. So one month percentage, percentage is in item one. That is item one. So that's here, or you can look at here as well. This is item uh, item one. So inside item one, we want this number, 2.39. So you can see inside item one, we want to go to first li, that is item one dot li, that means we are in this line, dot text. So we got this number and then we split it with the percentage signs to get only 2.39. 2. We, we only want 2.39. We don't want the percentage sign because we need to do some mathematics uh, with the number. And if there is a percentage sign, then we need to process it later again. Similarly, that's the way you can get, um, we can get uh, 2.39 for our one month percentage. That's basically this number. Similarly, we can get for three months and one year. So for three months, it will be negative 7.30 and for one year, it will be 100.87 percentage. Once we have this percentage, as I said, it's just basically we can um, multiply our current price with the percentage and then add it with the current price. That's how we get uh, our price prediction for one month, three months, and one year. It's the same equation, so current price pr plus the current price times one month percentage, three months percentage, and one year percentage. And then uh, we just round it up to two decimal point just to make it look good. Otherwise, there'll be lots of uh, decimal point after like this. So we don't want this much. We only want this. That's why we round it to two decimal. Uh, finally, we want this rating from the analyst data. So the analysts are saying that Apple is overperforming and the number of analysts that's saying is 43. So we want these two number. We want what's the performance, analytical performance is and how many of the analysts are saying that. So now to do that, we need the information from here. So we can move over our mouse and see where that is. So it's here. Element, element uh, analyst. We can get inside here so we can go analyst chart. So we, we want this div. 
So we can get the analyst data. As I said, the name of the HTML tag is Steve and the name of the class is analyst chart. So we can print this out and see how that looks. So once you print it, so that's basically gives us um, what the performance are. So the cell under hold over by, that's basically cell under hold over by is this thing. And the number of rating, the number of rating is 43. That is this text. As you can see, whenever there is this, whichever the rating is, that has a different class. It's called active. So everything is analyst, analyst option. But the one that is active, I mean, the one that is the analyst are saying is called analyst option active. So that's a good thing. So we can just pick analyst option active as our class name. So we will get the one uh, that analysts are saying about this talk. So we can get the recommendation like this. So analyst data. So analyst data basically is this whole thing. Dot find, we want to find the LI with analyst option active. So we go through all the LIs. Once we find the LI where the class name is analyst option active, we want that text. That's what we did in this line. So inside analyst data, we want to find the LI with the class name analyst option active. Now, um, just to make it look even better. So they, had, they are just saying under or over. So that's basically means underperforming or overperforming. So whenever there is a under or over, we just added a text plus performing. So this is like in a string concatenation. So it it's easier to understand. Next, we need we want the number of anal analysts who are saying what the rating is. And that's again easy. You can just take the analyst data. That's the whole thing. And then we want to find the span because see the number is within the span and uh, we want to get the text where the class name is analyst count so we want to find the span where the class name is analyst count we want to get the span within that so that is this span and we want the text so in the analyst data we want to find the span whose class name is this then we will go to the span within that and we will get the text. That is our 43. Now uh, we can uh, modify it. We don't modify it, just making it look good. So recommendation is overperforming and we added a string concatenation of how many analysts are saying that. So it's 43 analysts. So if we print everything now, it should print like, sorry, let's remove that. If we print everything now, that should look like Apple. This is our current price. This is the one month um, price. This is three month price. This is one year price. And what the analysts are saying and how many analysts are saying uh, what the performance will be. Now what we did here is for one stock. That's for Apple, but you can do it for multiple stock as well. So what you can do is you can make a list of stock and uh, Put the number Tesla, um, Microsoft, and uh, AMC, uh, whatever. And then you can write a for loop that loops through the list and that should give you the stock information for each of those stock as you can see. Uh, you can get it from Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, and AMC. So you don't manually need to go through each page of the website and then uh, you know scrape the data by yourself. Uh, the Python code can do it for your, for you in the background and you will get uh, a quick report of the stock information. Um, thank you for watching.